Okay, number 12, a student needs to find the density of the cube. Each side, ooh, each side of the cube measures three cubic centimeters. And the mass of the cube is 12 grams. So I need to find the volume of that cube, okay? So I'm gonna sketch out, it's not perfect, but I'm gonna sketch out my cube here. And there we go. I know my volume formula is length times width times height, and I know it's because it's a cube, everything is the same, okay? So three times three is nine times, and then I'm gonna bring that three down, nine times three is 27, okay? So 27. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do, because it's density is mass over volume, right? We found our volume. We know mass is in grams and volume is in cubic centimeters. And that was actually our, our clue because it didn't have a cubic here. So we had something to solve. Okay, so I know my denominator is going to go on the outside. Okay, I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to do my table. Okay, 27 times 1 is 27. 27 times 2 is 54. 27 times 3 is 81. 27 times 4 is 108. 27 times 5 is 135. 27 times 6 is 162. 27 times 7 is 189. 27 times 8 is 216. And 27 times 9 is 243. Okay, now I want to go to notebook paper because I do not like squished numbers. Okay, and for some of you, because it looks like we are going to have to add a decimal, some of you may like to turn your page sideways so that each place has its own place value using the line. So I'm going to do this one this way. And some of you may use this strategy already. Some of you may not. 27, okay, 12. 27 cannot go into 1. See how I'm keeping my place value all lined up, okay? 27 cannot go into 12. Oh, I need to add my decimal because I'm adding a zero and no I don't need to put it on the bottom I'm just showing you what I do to make sure I can see what I'm doing then I bring this down well 27 can go into 120 can't go five but it can go four times okay oh I cannot subtract zero from eight. I got to borrow from a neighbor. And it looks like I'm going to have repeating fours. Okay. So the answer is A. And I worked out all of my math. And I would want to see all of that math on your paper in order to give you test correction, um, text cor test corrections back. And if you need to go through and pause the video again, um, you may. That's one of the great things about videos. You can rewatch it. Okay. Oh, number 13, another density. Okay. A student decided to find the density of our house key to try to identify the type of metal from which it's made. And we can do that because density is a physical property of matter. We can identify an object by its density. 
it is the density will always be the same for that object. So density is a physical property of matter. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to do my density is mass divided by volume. Density is grams over cubic centimeters. My volume goes on the outside. Okay. So my volume is five milliliters, and we know that one cubic cent one milliliter is equal to one cubic centimeter. Okay. And I'm going to do my math down here on the right hand side because I know that my volume is five and my mass is 39 and 5 tenths. I'm going to do my T chart. And this is how I do my multiplication tables. If you prefer to do 5 times 1 equals 5, that is fine. This is the same thing. 5 times 1 is 5. 5 times 2 is 10. 5 times 3 is 15. And so on. And even if it seems like easy numbers to you, writing it out prevents silly mistakes. Okay? On this side, I'm going to go ahead and do my math. First thing I'm going to do is move that decimal point upstairs so I don't make a mistake. Three, uh, five cannot go under three. You notice I'm dealing with my place value. I'm not just leaving anything blank. I'm dealing with it so I don't confuse myself. That's one of the most common mistakes that I see is you may know the math, you may know the formula, but you're messing up on the division. I have 39. It can go seven times. Oh, that can go nine times. My density is seven and nine tenths grams per cubic centimeters. Okay. So my material is steel. Okay. Off to number 14. A student uses a triple beam balance to find the mass of a cube to be 12 grams. The student then uses a ruler to measure the length, width, and height of the cube using centimeters. Next, the student calculates the volume of the cube by multiplying the length, width, and height of the cube. And then measurements may, uh, the diagram shows the cube and the measurements made by the student. What is the density? So right away, density is mass divided by volume. That is in grams, cubic centimeters, and then my volume goes on the outside because that is the denominator, okay? My volume formula is length times width times height. I'm going to say my length is 3, my width is 2, my height is 4, okay? 3 times 2 is 6 times 4 is 24 cubic centimeters, okay? Now, my volume is 4, or, excuse me, 24, and my mass, let me go back up to my problem, is 12. Okay. Here we go. Now some of you might automatically see that half of 24 um, is 12 and you see the half, but we are always going to show our work so that we do not make silly mistakes. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to go to my sheet of paper here so that I have room. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, so I'm going to do my T chart. Have my page over here. I like to do my T charts on the right for some reason. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Here we go. 24 times 1 is 24. Times 2 is 48. Times 3 is 72. Times 4 is 96. 5 is 120. 6 is 144. 7 is 168. 8 is 192. 9 is 216. Okay. There we go. Now my volume goes on the outside. Oh, I should have done that. Let's see. I can still kind of see it sideways. And if I need to go back, I can turn my paper if I need to. Okay, so 24 because density is mass divided by volume. My mass on this problem is 12. My volume is 24. My denominator will go on the outside. And my numerator on the inside. Okay. 24 will not go into 1. This is why I don't make these videos all in one day. There we go. 24 will not go into 12. I need to add a zero, bring it down. Well, let's see, 120, 24 will go into 125 times above the zero is my place holder. Okay, so my density is five tenths grams per cubic centimeter. So that answer is B. Okay. Now let's do 15. A student performs an investigation to determine the density of an unknown sample. The student drops the 10 gram sample into a graduated cylinder with 30 milliliters of water. The water rises to 35 milliliters based on the chart and information above what is the most likely identity so here's my graduated cylinder this is my where my water is right i drop my 10 gram in there it goes and when i do that my water goes up to 35 Okay, and then I subtract these two, and that's my volume. Okay. Now, I've already done a T-chart for the fives, um, but I'm going to go ahead and do another one just in case you missed or did not miss a previous problem. Again, like I said, I like it on the right. Two, three, four.
4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We kind of ran out of room there. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, and I don't need 10. Okay, guys, bear with me. I'm going to finish this one and take a little break and come back for the others. Okay, here we go. I know I'm solving for density. Density is mass over volume which means density is grams over cubic centimeters. Okay. My volume goes on the outside. There we go. Okay. So let's see here. It said that my mass is 10. And my volume, I subtracted where I ended up from my initial because that's volume by displacement, right? The water moved and the distance that that water moved where it, where it ended up is my volume by displacement. Okay. There we go. I have my T-chart down here. Volume on the outside. Five cannot go into one. Subtract, bring down that one zero, but five can go into ten two times. So density is two grams per cubic centimeter. And guys, that's my aluminum right here. Remember that density is a physical property of matter. I can identify a piece of matter by its density. Okay, here we go. There we go. And the answer is aluminum. And I proved my answer. You guys are going to show all of your work to solve density.